Arlington's May 22nd town hall started at 1.30 p.m. Attendees included Libby Garvey, Christian Dorsey, Mark Schwartz, Jim Schwartz, Dr. Ruben Varghese, and Jane Rudolph, Director of Parks and Recreation. The meeting ran an additional 15 minutes, so rather than giving a blow-by-blow recital, we'll just review the answers and announcements. There was an announcement of a special one-day open testing site at the Barcroft Fitness Center on Four Mile Run Drive. No doctor notes or advance appointments will be required, and the site will be available for both walk-up and drive-up attendees. In addition, the hours of operation will be extended between 10 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. That's the good news. The bad news is that the one-day event will take place on Tuesday, May 26th, which provides only four days' notice from the meeting time. The targeted group, low-income residents in the 22204 zip code, may not get the news until it's too late. Also, the need for food is at an all-time high. Arlington now has 12,000 unemployment compensation claims constituting 8% of the labor force, and some others are suffering from reduced income. Accordingly, signage has been added to median strips and other grassy areas providing telephone numbers which residents can call for assistance, provided they have a phone. The federally funded CARES Act will give Arlington a share of almost $21 million based on population. It's good, but not really enough for everything. It will help with support and resources for emergency cash to avoid eviction, small business support, improved testing, and other needs. However, it will not be enough to make up for other budget shortfalls. The Arlington Public Schools will receive their own separate funding. Meanwhile, the 2020 U.S. Census has a response rate of only 69% in Arlington, with about 30,000 households yet to participate. Ironically, these are mostly located in the areas and demographic groups who need the most help. As far as COVID trends are concerned, Arlington is described as improving, with one week remaining before the decision to start reopening will be made. With special guest Jane Rudolph in attendance, there were a lot of questions about Arlington's parks and recreation facilities. Ms. Rudolph announced a partial reopening of parks on May 23rd, but the tennis courts and basketball courts would remain closed. Face masks and social distancing will still be encouraged. Libby Garvey suggested that it would be possible for residents to purchase a carry-out meal from a local restaurant, then consume it at one of the parks in a picnic fashion. But this would be difficult while wearing a mask. Three high school swimming pools and some other public pools are subject to guidance from the governor. There is some talk of opening pools for lap swimming only, but this may not be feasible at all facilities. Arlington's summer camps are canceled this year. Although some bad behavior is acknowledged in the parks, the rangers are not empowered to enforce the rules. Additional signage will be posted to encourage compliance, but ultimately, citizens will have to self police. There is hope that some of the additional facilities could at least be partially reopened sometime in June, but it's too early to tell. Mark Schwartz reminded everyone that Arlington must follow the Virginia state guidance and that Governor Northam would make final decisions. Meanwhile, Dr. Varghese stressed that everyone should have face coverings when going out in public, especially when shopping. Also, the recommendations are all-inclusive, not either-or which means face coverings plus hand washing plus social distancing plus keeping travel at a minimum. Assisted living facilities are trying to keep the germs out, hence no visitors. The same concept applies to the inside facilities of community centers and libraries because interior spaces are too hard to control. Noncompliance has been observed at certain construction sites, parks, and within high-rise apartment buildings. Arlington has inspectors for the construction sites, but cooperation has not been universal. Within high-rise buildings, the only recourses are reporting the problems to the building management, 
planning your outings during off hours or, when feasible, using the stairs instead of the elevator. It was pointed out that poor compliance going into Phase 1 could produce a spike in COVID cases and force a return to Phase 0. On a positive note, some 30,000 masks have been ordered and are expected soon. The first batch will go to county employees, but regular citizens will also get a share. In summation, best behavior was encouraged. Wearing masks, minimizing trips, washing hands, staying home as much as possible, using hand sanitizer, and avoiding face-touching. The meeting concluded at 1.45 p.m.